Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video, and in this video I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. I hope you guys are excited. This is another Jet Starlight non-canon side story that takes place after the events of episode number 39 in an alternate universe, a parallel dimension, a splintering timeline that is separate from the canon Jet Starlight reality. In other words, everything that happens in these non-canon side stories doesn't affect the main story. The main purpose of these non-canon side stories are for the fans to be able to create their own characters or pick characters from other universes for Jet Starlight to face off against in battle. So a lot of these are very battle focused, but I think today's episode will actually have an interesting non-canon story focus. Um, this is because in recent episodes, new characters have been introduced that are kind of interesting and are not fan characters, but are characters that the AI has created that they're trying to weave into Jet Starlight's lore. So will there be a fight? Most definitely. Um, but do I think the whole episode is going to be a fight? Probably not. It'll make more sense as I go over the last action from the previous episode and a quick recap blurb of text that I wrote. Uh, and then from there, I can start the timer and we can jump into a 30 minute Jet Starlight adventure. So let's hop right on in. You are glad that Kiyoshi left. You still don't trust Kiyoshi, but you also still don't really understand her either. You approach the mysterious figure that you believe to be a lover from your past. You ask the mysterious figure, who are you? And why did you bring me here? The mysterious figure turns to look at you. They are a red-headed female with a large bust. You're not sure, but you think that she is the same age as you are. The woman also has a large tattoo of a black hourglass on her upper arm. So that's the action from the previous episode. Now let's jump into this text blurb below it. Also, I noticed that my uh, tongue just kept getting stuck on S sounds, so I'm going to be more aware of that. You are Jet Starlight. You are on a mountainside in a dimension of absolute darkness. You are standing with a mysterious figure that you believe to be a forgotten lover. The mysterious figure is a woman wearing a tattered cloak, has red hair, a nearly flawless face, a large bust, green eyes, hidden tentacles, and a black hourglass tattoo. Your goal is to learn the identity of the mysterious figure, to learn if the mysterious figure is related to the adventurer, to learn if the mysterious figure is the void hero who helped you fight Serene, and to learn why the mysterious figure brought you here in the first place. Just as you are about to ask the mysterious figure to reveal their identity, a man named John Mark... I, I don't know if it's Marcel or Mark Krell. I'm pretty sure it's Mark Krell, but I keep swapping the R and the C whenever I read it. A man named John Mackerel... <laughs> I guess so. We'll go with that. A man named John Mackerel appears from a nearby portal with a gun pointed straight at you. You say, I should have known. You are starting to get used to the fact that random people are just constantly hunting you down for a variety of reasons. You want to take down John Mackerel in a quick and creative way so that you can get back to investigating who the mysterious figure is. So John Mackerel is today's uh, fan character for Jet Starlight to face off against. Uh, shout out to the Discord. This is another character submitted on Discord. And real quick, let me read the quick text blurb that I got um, on this character. That way you guys have a better idea of what this character is capable of before we start up the mission. So John Mackerel is a tall, muscular man who wears a mask and a cloak with blue streaks. John Mackerel fights using guns with special bullets that track enemies and absorb portions of an enemy's energy. John Mackerel doesn't have a lot of stamina, so he likes to end his fights quickly. John Mackerel wants to kill Jet Starlight because he believes that Jet Starlight's powers could be a threat to the multiverse. So that's pretty much all I know about this character. Again, this was a character that this was a character submitted on the Discord, and apparently this isn't an original character. John Mackerel's from something. I don't know what he's from, uh, but I imagine that's not going to influence the story too much. Um, but yeah, now let's see what blurb that the AI generated, and then after we look at that blurb, we'll start the 30-minute timer and we'll jump into the adventure. John has a powerful weapon. He is going to kill you. You must get the gun from him, either by knocking it from his hand or by taking it after he is defeated. You can see that John is terrified. Uh, so I'm probably going to take advantage of that. I'm going to hit start on the 30 minute timer and let's hop right into the adventure. I'm also going to make sure that my volume isn't up too high so that when the timer goes off, it doesn't like blow you guys away. And I'm going to make sure we've already started recording. We have. So let's get started. I'm going to switch from story to do. There we go. 
And then um, because John is terrified, I'm going to say, you seem scared. You should be. You're holding a gun. Well, I guess you're pointing a gun at God. You should drop your weapon and go back from whence you came. Um, oh, I messed up. You see that guy over there? You point at Serene Ascended, who is still stuck trying to split into two halves for eternity. You say, I have created a living hell for that guy. And I wasn't even trying. I was just talking to him. Just like how I'm talking to you right now. Imagine what would happen if I actually fought you. Stand down and walk away. You don't seem particularly strong. And I only want to fight powerful opponents. So there we go. I think I can scare John away. Because uh, I feel like I have plenty of stuff that I've done. That essentially is just enough for me to like get him to back off. You see a scared look on John's face. He slowly moves his finger away from the trigger. John slowly lowers his gun. He opens his inventory and places the weapon inside. John Mackerel, you have chosen the wise option, the mysterious figure says. Yo, yo. <laughs> Intimidation check on another level. Let's go. That's a one action defeat. John was just not ready. He didn't want the smoke. He brought the gun, but he wasn't ready for the smoke. So now let's learn more about the mysterious figure, because that's actually what I'm more interested in. So I'm going to ask the mysterious figure for their name. Yeah, that is interesting. For a lot of these fights, I just end up fighting the next person. Um, it's really cool to be able to point at someone and then just go, hey, that's the last guy I fought. Just leave. <laughs> a lot of the people that I fight... I just kind of like kill and then maybe I absorb their essence or something happens to their body. So there's no way to show someone like I just mean business. And if you're not as strong as that person, you're just going to die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I think that's I think that's good that I was able to take advantage of having already defeated Serene Ascended to not have to fight John Mackerel. It is rude to ask for someone's name after they have offered you something as gracious as giving you their name. What? It appears that this figure isn't going to offer you their name. It seems silly to keep calling them the mysterious figure. What? After they have offered you something as gracious as giving you their name. I... Hmm. I don't quite understand what you just said. I need something to call you other than mysterious figure. I believe I remember you, but I don't remember your name. What is your name? Yeah, I want information on who the mysterious figure is. I want to know why I don't remember them. I want to know why they have that hourglass tattoo. <laughs> Excuse me. I am the one who you believe you remember. I am the one who believes you are powerful. I am the one who believes you may have potential. You stare at this being in shock. The being has the same voice and apparently the same face. I don't know what that means. I can, uh, I can add to that. As the one you remember,
even though you feel like you remember a lot. Well, I know, even though you feel like you recognize who the being is, you still don't remember much about them or their name. So maybe I should try and remember their name. Um, I attempt to remember the mysterious figure's name. Because I don't like the whole mysterious figure thing. Like, just let me know who you are. And that's probably like one of the biggest questions I have off the bat. You focus on remembering. Your eyes are closed, but you hear the voice in your head. I feel like the voice in your head thing can always go in a weird direction. I'm going to hit enter and just see what happens with that. Remember, you try to remember, you know, this voice, you hear the voice again, remember, a name comes to your mind, your eyes snap open and you say one word, whispery, whispery, that's an interesting name. I'm going to say, I remember the name whispery. Are you whispering? Um, I have like multiple questions for this character that I need filled out. So let me get like as many of those answers as I possibly can. I am not. You remember that you once had a friend, mentor, and partner by the name of Whispery. You wonder what happened to him. You can't remember his fate. Your memories of him are hazy and confused. Interesting. So not whispery, but apparently whispery is someone who is important, at least in this non-canon universe or whatever. Um, so I don't know, like, yeah, I feel weird about having to like guess the mysterious figure's name. You ask the mysterious figure if their hourglass tattoo has anything to do with the adventurer. You know that the adventurer carries around an hourglass that lets him manipulate time and reality. Do, 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 do. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. I cannot answer that question. Yes and no both are true. Yes and no aren't answers. It depends on the question. Okay, interesting. So the mysterious figure is essentially saying, yes, it does have something to do with the adventurer. So that's fair. I guess I would say Are you related to the adventurer in any way? That's a pretty like clear cut question. Uh, Cause I do imagine that my previous question was, I guess, kind of vague. I am a fan of the adventurer's work. You try to remember if you've heard of this being before, you can't remember anything about them. They seem content on not saying anything more. Yeah, and then it's like, can you at least tell me your name? So if they're a fan of the adventurer's work, that's like the same thing as them saying that they're like a fan of the story, which is really interesting because the adventurer just is the story incarnate. So, eh, I mean, they could just be like a fan, but it's interesting for someone to just have any awareness of the adventurer at all. You know, that, that'd be like being aware of like, the god that writes out everything that happens in our reality and being like, yeah, I'm a fan. Like, I really like the world that they created kind of thing. Um, so they're a fan of the adventure. I guess I'm going to ask, are you the void hero who helped me face off against Serene Ascended? Well, I guess against normal Serene because Serene hadn't become Serene Ascended until after Void Hero uh, went back into their portal. You wonder if this being knows something about the Void. 
You ask if they are the Void Hero. I am not. Ooh, so she's not the Void Hero. She doesn't seem to be directly connected to the adventurer. You wonder who this being is. You want to learn more, but you feel that asking too many questions will drive the being away. I'm still going to ask questions. I don't know where this mysterious being can go. That would make me be like, oh, I guess I got to stop talking to you or whatever. Like, I, I have portal magic. I can just follow um, the mysterious figure wherever. So I have a list of questions up here. Um, so I want to know their name. They won't tell me. Um, let's see. What where, where were all the questions? I wanted to know if they're related to the adventurer. They're a fan. I want to know if they're the void hero. The answer is just no. Um, I want to know why they brought me here. That's a good question. Um, I'm going to say, did you bring me here to take my heart? so that you could use my god blood to become a god. Yeah, so that's a pretty good question because that's essentially what they did. Like if they say no, then that implies that they just decided to do that on a whim. You want to get straight to the point. You want to know if this being wants to kill you and use your blood to ascend to godhood. I told you, wonderful. I am not here for you for now. Your heart sinks when you hear these words. I don't have a heart. My heart got ripped out. Retry? Because I'm lost. I brought you here to help you. I didn't bring you here to take your heart. I didn't bring you here to kill you. Then why did you bring me here? You know why. More importantly, why did you take my heart? Like, you say you didn't come, like, you didn't bring me here to take my heart, but you did anyways. You literally ripped my heart out of my chest and pumped my blood into your veins. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, like it's interesting to have a character who's a big mystery box, but it's weird when you start asking the mystery box questions and they keep just going, Nope, not going to answer that. Nope, nope, not going to say anything. The being says nothing. It just holds your heart in their hands. I asked you a question. You already know the answer. Not really. You're not making much sense. I thought the answer would be obvious by now. Um, so I thought the answer would be obvious by now. Should be like on a new line. Yeah, and it should be said by um, her. Okay. So I'm still trying to break everything down. From what I understand, you are a lover from my past that I don't remember. You've taken my heart, literally, which I think is supposed to be symbolic based on how cryptic you are about everything. You're a fan of the adventurer. And you're not void hero. Which is interesting. So then I still like I still want to know your name. Why you brought me here? Is that it? Like, is that all I want to know? Oh, and why I don't remember much about you. Because that is, like, an interesting situation. Um, yeah, and it's... Oh, wait a minute. I have a power that I, like, almost never use, where I can touch somebody's head and read their mind. The being holds out your heart for you to take. Do you trust me? Not really. Yeah, that's fair to say. That's a shame. It would be nice if you trusted me. I can assure you that everything's going to be fine. Your vision starts to fade. Oh, what? No, hold up. Hold up. Fight that. I'm not about to let my vision fade. You attempt to fight to, to not lose consciousness. You need to figure out 
who the mysterious figure is. You remember that you possess the ability to read people's minds by touching their head. You attempt to reach out and touch the mysterious figure's head to learn who they are and why they brought you here. So the reason why I forget that I have that ability a lot is because it's one of the abilities that I got when I became an angel after I like resurrected for like the second time. And I pretty much almost never use my angel abilities. Why you ask? I don't know. It's something that the AI added to the story after I resurrected one time, and it's not entirely combat focused. So when you find yourself fighting people most of the time, you just never really read their mind. But in this case, it seems like I kind of need to do that because the mysterious figure just doesn't want to say anything. You try to grab the mysterious figure's face, but your arms go straight through them. Your head hits something solid and your vision goes white. Your body convulses a bit and then stops moving altogether. When you awaken, you'll be in a new location entirely. Ah, okay, cool. So I'm going to attempt to wake up and to use portal magic to hunt down the mysterious figure. You are determined not to give up on learning more about the mysterious figure. I mean, like, maybe the mysterious figure at the end of the day doesn't matter. Or maybe the mysterious figure is, like, really cool and interesting. It's really hard to tell when you don't know. You wake up and find yourself in a place that you don't recognize. It appears that you are very high up and it's very cold. You look around, but you see no one else around. It appears that you're awake. You hear a voice coming from your right. Okay. You look to your right. Yeah, I mean, just look. Just see who it is. If it's the mysterious figure, they better say their name. I better, like, finally know who they are. You see no one. You can't see me, but I can assure you that I am right here. You hear the same voice as before coming from directly behind you. You feel a shiver down your spine. Okay. I'm going to say, are you the mysterious figure that I was just speaking with a moment ago in the absolute darkness dimension? Which is a weird name for anywhere. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, that dimension is a dimension created by the AI that never got a name. And the only thing we know about it is that this has a windy mountainside and that it's just really dark there. That would be correct. We don't have time to speak right now, however. I am here to bring you to the Council of Elders. They wish to speak with you immediately. Hmm. I'm going to say... Yeah, I don't really care about the Council of Elders. I want to know who you are. If you and I really are past lovers, then I want to know why I don't remember you. Yeah, I also want to know, I guess, more about why she took my heart and why she also, like, magic roofied me and took me here. There are a lot of questions. We don't have time for that now. We must bring you before the Council of Elders. You feel a force grab your right arm and pull you through the air. It feels similar to when Zena pulled you through the portal in Void Hermitage. Uh, don't add extra non-canon stuff. Don't bring Zena up right now. She's not in the non-canon side story, or at the very least, she doesn't come up in the non-canon side story for real. Hmm. Okay, let's see. You can't see the figure that is pulling you through the air, but you imagine that the figure 
is just invisible. You attempt to grab the mysterious figure's head so that you can read their mind and figure out why you don't remember them. Okay. So if I can grab her head, that should just get me to what I want to know. You attempt to grab the mysterious figure's head, but your hands go right through them. You don't know if this is because they're made up of energy or because they have the ability to turn invisible. Well, you should change that to intangible. You both speed through a portal and arrive in a large room. Let's see. Excuse me. Also, I'm in, like, my ghost form. So that might be a part of it. You think that you have been unable to grab the mysterious figure because you are in your spirit form. You attempt to regenerate your physical body so that you can grab the mysterious figure's head and learn why you don't remember them. Yeah. So again, I don't care about the Council of Elders thing. I just want to know who the mysterious figure is. You begin regenerating your physical body and you can feel it start to materialize. As your body begins to regenerate, you're able to see that you are in a large library. I don't care. You rush at the mystery. Well, hmm. You rush toward the sound of the mysterious figure's voice and attempt to grab their head. You know that if you can grab their head, that you can read their mind. Let's see. Even though the mysterious figure is invisible, your void senses can help you detect beings that normally would be undetectable. Okay. Let me grab their head. Let me grab her head. And then I'll just remember who she is. As you rush toward the noise of the voice, you start to feel faint. You collapse on the ground as you begin losing all your energy. You think it's because you haven't eaten all day. What? Bullshit. Bull I am a god. That's not an issue. I used to eat, and that used to be a thing, but now I just literally don't have to eat. That's like a canon thing. Your void shadow powers allow you to see beings that normally would be undetected. As your body finishes regenerating, you rush toward the sound of the mysterious figure's voice and tackle them to the floor. Okay, booyah. Sounds like a plan. Uh, change it from void shadow powers to just void. Uh, it's not called void shadow powers. Okay. You attempt to grab the mysterious figure's head so that you can learn who she is, why she brought you here, and why you don't remember her. Okay. If we tackled her to the ground, then we should almost be there. We should almost just have what we need. You grab the figure's head and dive into her mind. You see a vast amount of knowledge stretched out before you. It is almost as if your own mind has expanded, whoa, has expanded several times over. You quickly make your way to the memory that seems to be the source of all of these problems. Well, you should say that seems to be the answer to all your questions. Okay. You review her memory in an attempt to learn who she is, why you don't remember her, and why she brought you. 
Well, why she brought you to the council? I, I don't know. Just try and figure out who she is and why you don't remember her first. I care less about the Council of Elders thing. Because she may just work for the Council of Elders or something. And that's why she brought me here. I don't know. You see yourself inside a small house playing with a few figures. In the memory, you are about four years old and you're playing with some figures that represent you, your parents, and your sister. You're creating a story of how you all go on an adventure and defeat an evil wizard. Okay. What does that have to do with her? Yeah, like retry. Who has figures of their own family? Here we go. You see a red cloaked woman in front of you. She is bald, has black eyes and fair skin. The memory is set when you first meet. Oh, she looked really different. Hello there, she says in a chipper voice. Hello. Hmm. You are surprised that she looked so different when you first met her. You pay attention to the memory and try to figure out her name and why um, you no longer remember her. I see someone's finally come to join our happy little community. What's your name, stranger? She asks. My name is... You try to reply, but you see your mouth isn't moving. It is clearly another memory. And you're just an observer in this one. What? Weirdly phrased. Like, it's almost as if, like, I take the possession of my past memory self's body. Uh, so let me retry that. Uh, I've come to invite you on an adventure, a dangerous one that may cost us our lives. I know you recently came back from one, but this one is going to be much more risky. Are you in? Oh, yes. You remember the woman now. Okay, so I remember the woman now. So now that I remember her, um, you try to remember the woman's name and... Why you didn't remember her before. Yeah, like, if seeing just that jogged my memory and that's all I needed, then actually answer my questions now. Like, actually just let me know who she is. You rack your brain and try to remember her name. Your mind draws a blank. Shut the fuck up! You just said I remembered who she was. <laughs> it is a frustrating feeling not being able to remember something so simple. Are you okay, she asked with a genuine concern in her voice. Yeah, just had a little memory lapse, that's all. Bullshit. Bullshit. It's, I shouldn't have tried to remember shit. It says that I remember her now, right? You try to tap into your restored memory of the woman to figure out her name and why you couldn't remember her before. Because it's a thing where it's like, I should, like, based off of that last thing, I should now just know who she is. The game straight up is like, oh, yes, you remember her now. As like, I already kind of remembered she existed. It's not like I don't remember her at all kind of thing. You see a vast amount of information about the woman. You learn all about her, her likes, dislikes, personality, anything you could ever want. You learn that her name is cruel, but you already knew that. You can't help but be impressed by how much you learned. Okay, so it's like, you know everything about her. Okay, so now that I know everything about Cruel, um, you let go of Cruel's head and exit her mind. Let's see. You try to see if you now know why Cruel took your heart and pumped your blood into her veins. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, all we figured out was her name. Uh, it's, it's a fucking mystery box. So we know that she's connected to the Council of Elders 
whoever they are. I already have faced elder gods before, so I doubt it's like elder gods, unless this is like a different group of elder gods. But we know that she's connected to the Council of Elders. We know that she's a lover from my past, or at least that's what I think. Apparently, I went on a super dangerous adventure with her once. Um, she's a fan of the adventurer, so that's why she has the hourglass tattoo. And her being a fan of the adventurer is interesting, but not as as but but not as interesting as her actually like being related to the adventurer directly in some way. She's not the void hero. Um, we still don't know why we couldn't remember her before. We don't know why. Um, She's bringing me to the Council of Elders in the first place. We don't know why she took my heart. Uh, unless it's symbolic, because it's supposed to be like, oh, we're past lovers. Like, maybe that's supposed to be the, a hint or something. But then that doesn't explain why she pumps my god blood into her veins. I just have questions, uh, and I want to know the answers to these questions. Um, I do like problems that you can't, like, punch. Uh, a lot of the recent Just Starlight episodes have been like, you fight a guy. And you fight another guy, and you fight a guy after that, and there's like six more guys, and there's ten more guys. Well, if I'm fighting a whole bunch of dudes, I'm just really good at fighting. I, I'm just going to whoop whoever you guys throw at me. This guy ran away because I was too strong. Uh, John Mackwell wasn't shit. So <laughs> it's interesting to run into a problem where it's like, I can't just like intimidate her necessarily into letting me know stuff. And I don't think I necessarily want to intimidate her. I think that's also the issue. It's less a battle of wits and more like, how do you get information out of someone who just doesn't talk back without like torture? Because I don't think I'm going to torture her either. That's not really what I do. Um, but yeah, are you guys interested in learning who this person is? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and on our Discord if you want to like learn more about cool and what's going on in this like non-canon side story i've heard some people show interest in us going back to the main series so let me know if we should pivot from the non-canon side story back to the main series uh, the main series was in the middle of the Ill evil realm war we were almost done with the evil realm war right when we started all the non-canon stuff um i do think if we switch back to the main series it would essentially restart all the non-canon stuff so if you guys want to know who cool is like who this person is and like all the stuff that i've been investigating i think we should continue the non-canon thing for now if you guys are like nah i don't really care who cruel is you're probably not going to learn who she is because she's like really cryptic and everything and you don't care about like the council of elder stuff then we can do like episode 40 and we can keep the normal jet starlight series going um, but I know that we have, like, a mix of fans. Like, some people want to continue the main story. Other people like, you know, adding in characters for me to fight and stuff like that. Um, and there's a balance that can be struck. But I need to know, like, what do you guys want more? So definitely let me know in the comment section below and on our Discord. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. I do daily AI Dungeon 2 videos on the channel. Um, and make sure you ring that notification bell so you know whenever these videos come out. I am really open to suggestions, so definitely make sure to message me if you guys have scenario ideas, prompt ideas, um, if you guys want me to do like a speed run of something, uh, because I do love speed running scenarios and playing through you guys' scenarios. And also, feel free to send me the characters that you want me to fight. If your characters aren't particularly strong, I'm, I'm just going to whoop them. Like, you actually need to come up with like strong people. Uh, if you like want it to be like a real fight because I just think most people aren't gonna be like ready to throw the hands With me regardless of who I'm playing as because I I'm I'm really good at fighting in these games But anyways, thank you all for watching if you guys like this video Make sure to smash that like button favorite comment subscribe and ding 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 ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos This is your friend your boy jump like the one only log it out. Peace guys